half the fun of literature is discussing what you've read with your friends, asking which bit did you like best and arguing perhaps over the book. And I've been trying to imagine that I've just read The Pillars of the Earth for the first time and thinking about what would be on my mind, what questions I would want to ask, what things I would want to talk about with my pals. And so to help your discussion get started, I've come up with a few ideas. The Pillars of the Earth came out of my interest in cathedrals. Uh, in the 70s and 80s, I would visit cathedrals. Most people take an hour or two to look at a cathedral and I would spend a day or two. I was completely fascinated. Uh, these very old buildings that are very beautiful, very costly to build and built by medieval people with hammer and chisel. The builders were men and some women who lived in wooden huts and slept on the floor. And I began to think about the questions that occur to everybody who visits cathedrals sooner or later. How was this built and why? What drove these people to the enormous effort lasting sometimes 50, 100, 150 years, an enormous expense and the difficulty of building these great churches. And we have to remember that they really had no idea of the stresses and strains within a building like that. It was all hand and eye. Next time you're in a cathedral, have another look at the ceiling, the, the, what we call the vaulting, those curved panels and imagine building a complex curve like that with no mathematics to guide you, just hand and eye. So the pillars of the earth is supposed to explain how and why the cathedrals were built. And something it might be interesting to discuss is to what extent does the book succeed? When you come to the end, do you understand? how the cathedrals were built and a tougher question, do you understand why the cathedrals were built and why not try to explain to your friends what you've learned about that from the book and see how much you, see how deeply the understanding goes. When I told people I was gonna write a novel about building a cathedral, the reaction was um, unenthusiastic. Uh, they said, what, um, no spies, secret agents, no KGB, no Nazis, no monks, stonemasons, mortar makers, priests. Uh, but I did, I was quite sure that I could make a, a popular novel out of this idea. It struck me. I must say it struck me as an absolutely wonderful idea. Not many other people were struck exactly that way. And something that you, you might like to talk about is how the dramas in the lives of all the people in the story, Philip, Aliena, Tom Builder, Jack, how their personal destinies are all drawn together by the building of the church. That, in my view, is how the book works. And it might be interesting just to think about that. The story set in a period of civil war in England. King Stephen and the Empress Maud both think that they ought to rule England and they're having a battle about it. And in consequence, there is no strong central authority. Uh, neither Stephen nor Maud can impose their will on people because each is constantly undermined by the other. Uh, and I was greatly attracted to that. And you might like to ask why. Um, why would an author prefer 
to set a story in a time when there is no strong central authority to, as it were, police the country and to enforce the law. The character in The Pillars of the Earth that readers mention to me more often than any other, more often than any other in any of my books, actually, is William Hamley. He is an absolute rotter. And you really can't find anything good to say about him. He has no redeeming features. If you wanted to be very kind, you might say that it's really his mother's fault that he's so horrible. But that's not much of an excuse. And um, now, sometimes people say um, that a villain in a story should have some redeeming features. Nobody should be all black or all white. There should be shades of grey, even in the worst character. And sometimes I do that. Sometimes I think that's an interesting thing to do. But, you know, with William Hamley, I just thought the heck with that. And uh, I made him just a, a thoroughly hateful character. And you might like to talk about William and other villains in other books of mine, books of other people's. Talk about the villains and whether they have any redeeming qualities and which approach is best, which is which creates the better story. Finally, my favourite scene in the Pillars of the Earth is towards the end of the book, where Philip runs into an old enemy, a man who has caused him trouble. He was in the monastery, he caused trouble. He left the monastery, he caused more trouble. This guy has been a thorn in Philip's flesh and a, and a dishonest betrayer of Philip throughout the story. And Philip comes across him near the end of the story. And this man is picking over a rubbish dump and he picks up a pair of sandals. So he's obviously absolutely hit rock bottom. Philip goes over to him and says, come back to the monastery. And Philip's companion says, what are you saying? We don't want him back. He was nothing but trouble. He's arrogant. Philip says, think about it. And Remedius agrees to come back to the monastery. And Philip says, take my horse, you're tired, I'll walk. And, and the other monk says, but prior, you can't walk and let that guy ride your horse. Philip says, think about it. Think about it. And that is a moment in the story that defines Philip's character. Uh, and it might be interesting to talk about other moments in the story that are definitive, that define what a character is like. A character makes a decision, good or evil, it might be an evil decision character makes a decision or a weak decision character makes a choice and that choice defines the character well i hope that's helpful i hope it's interesting and have a great time in your book group mm -hmm.